Good morning guys and welcome back to another video here from Sofia, Bulgaria. It's a nice beautiful morning here in the city and of course today it's got to be a food day. I mean the food here is incredible. Bulgarian food is delicious. I honestly don't know what we're gonna get. Like I said I still have a very cursory understanding of what Bulgarian food is. It's so difficult to really grasp it because it's got Turkish influences, European influences, Eastern European influences. So it's just really really different, really really unique. So let's go ahead and learn more about Bulgarian food today, about Bulgarian cuisine, and let's go ahead and start our food day here in Sofia, Bulgaria. Traditional donut with chocolate, is it also the kitsa or yeah, it's something no, different? No, no, no. It's like a kind of the same, but it's with uh, chocolate in the middle. With chocolate it's in the middle. Like donuts. Can I have one mikitsa and then one of the traditional donut, please? Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Have Thank you. Day. Thank you. All right, first off the day, we, we're actually right here at the Woman's Bazaar, and there are these stalls that are selling these delicious things called mekitsas, which is supposed to be a traditional thing. As the owner said, I don't know if you guys heard, it's Saturday morning, grandma will make you mekitsas if you're a Bulgarian person. So if you have a Bulgarian grandmother, she is probably up on a Saturday morning at nine in the morning cooking you mekitsas, and that sounds like a pretty good thing. Mekitsa, what is it? It's like a sort of donut, a fried dough thing here in Bulgaria, and it's usually topped off with sugar. And I also got something else, which is a chocolate donut. The chocolate donut is not a mekitsa. She made it very clear, it's not a mekitsa. A mekitsa is the way this thing is. It's a little puffy, a little bit airy. Um, so without further ado, they literally just finished making these mekitsas. They just came out of the fryer. So this is as fresh, as hot, as, as beautifully fresh as it gets. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and try out the Mikitsa. Oh, that is so airy. That is probably one of the airiest donuts I've had. It kind of is like a Romanian langosh. It's very, very similar to langosh, but I would say that langosh isn't even as airy as a Makita. Like this is definitely airier than a Makita. So in my opinion, at least, Bulgarian makitsas better than Romanian langoshes. I, I, I know a lot of Romanians are probably going to unsubscribe this channel right now, but my honest opinion is the makitsa is so, so airy. It's so light. The powdered sugar on the top, beautiful layer, but it's not too sweet. It's a very thin layer of powdered sugar, so it's the perfect sort of sweetness to complement the sort of oiliness of the makitsa. Now, of course, chocolate donut. I don't think I need to explain more about a chocolate donut. This is not freshly out of the fryer, but still looks delicious. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Mm. Definitely more like a langosh. The dough is a lot denser, a lot harder. Yes, it's crispy on the outside. Yes, it's oily on the outside, but this is much more like a langosh, whereas the makitsa is just so airy, so light. It's like, you know, when you fry an egg, and the egg white turns into that sort of like very crispy, crispy, crunchy, airy thing. That's what the makitsa is like. The chocolate donut is literally a chocolate donut and there is chocolate on the inside. I will say the dough is quite thick. There is quite a lot of dough surrounding the chocolate and the chocolate is not that much. But nonetheless, really, really delicious. Total price of these, by the way, let's get this straight. 220 left. 220 left. That means for both of these, it's like a euro. That is insane to me to believe that these are the prices that we're getting here in Bulgaria. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this up. This is just a quick, beautiful, nice little breakfast, and I will see you guys at the next stop. All right, next stop, we've come to a place, honestly, I don't know the name. It's all in Cyrillic alphabet, but it's a cafeteria style place. You got a lot of locals around here eating food and they've got a bunch of different things out that are all very, very traditional. Things that I actually haven't seen anywhere else in Bulgaria, but this is as authentic as Bulgarian food gets. So that's fascinating. Here's what I've got. I've gotten a spinach soup, which is by the way, not green, but red. Have you ever had a red spinach soup? I don't think so. Um, and I've got a plate of rice, with a pork stew, which is really popular. And this pork thing with egg and pickles inside, which is like a meatloaf sort of thing, but it's not the same thing as a traditional meatloaf. It's very, very interesting. And I've got some rice with, I think, chicken inside as well. That also looks amazing. But first off, 
infused tea. One of the best things that I've ever had. And this is lemon and lemongrass, one of my favorite flavors. So before I begin, gotta get a fresh fused tea. Oh, that's amazing. I, honestly, if you ever come to Romania or Bulgaria, fused tea is, is the way to go. Let's go ahead and try the spinach soup. Just by looking at the spinach soup, you can see there's a lot of spinach inside, but there's also like barley, I think, maybe some rice, some carrots, something like that. Let's go ahead and try out the spinach soup. Mm. Very, very interesting. Very creamy, actually, and a little bit sour. I don't know where the sourness comes from, but very unique flavor. Not much spinach flavor, not spicy, but creamy and soury almost. Very interesting, never had anything like that before. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into the meatloaf. I really wanna try out this Bulgarian meatloaf because there's egg inside. I mean, if you look at this, there's literally a piece of egg inside. I've never had egg inside a meatloaf, so let's go ahead and try out what a Bulgarian meatloaf is like. Oh, that is some of the best meatloaf I've ever had. The flavor is amazing. It is a pork meatloaf. Well, so much flavor. It's really, really minced down. It's almost like no sort of canned corned beef flavor. That's what it has in there. The egg, really, really nice, really, really soft. And they've got other things. They've got carrots, they've got cucumbers, they've got pickles and stuff. So, very, very different, very unique flavor, actually. I really like it. And the sauce, you can see the sauce is like sort of brown gravy liquid. That's just a typical savory brown um, sauce. All right, let's go ahead and try some of the rice. Um, just simple rice, it shouldn't be too much. Let's try that. Yeah, nothing much with the rice, very simple. But what the main thing I want to try is the pork stew. You can see we've got pieces of pork in here. They're just sort of cooked down inside this sort of red sauce. Let's try out the Bulgarian pork stew. Mm. Oh, wow. That is a, a very, very strong porky flavor. It's very, very umami porky. There's the fat of the pork that's sort of rendered down to this like sticky gelatinous flavor inside the sauce. Delicious, absolutely incredible. Highly, highly recommend that. I think the sauce is a little bit too salty. I think it's really, really so flavorful. So salty for me. Um, it's like salted pork in a soup, but delicious. Now, of course, finally, chicken and rice together. We've got big pieces of chicken um, and of course some rice together. Let's go ahead and try it out. Taste it with the chicken. Not much to say, it's literally chicken and rice. The chicken has some sort of like a barbecue-y sweet flavor to it, but out of this whole meal, I will say, the meatloaf, that's amazing. That is really, really good with the egg inside. An egg inside a meatloaf, that's pretty insane. The pork stew, very, very porky, very, very umami with the rice, that's a perfect combination. Spinach soup, a little bit weird for me. It's spinachy, but also at the same time, it's sour, so quite weird, but the meatloaf. That's what you should really come for. That is really, really good. And something that I haven't seen here anywhere else in Bulgaria. So definitely give that a try when you're here in Sofia. Well, what a delicious meal that was. Total price is actually a little bit pricier than I expected. It was 15 lev, which is roughly about eight, seven bucks, which is uh, quite pricey, but we're also in the city center of Sofia. The meatloaf, amazing. I mean, an egg, how do you put an egg inside a meatloaf. I don't know how it was done, but it was really, really good. The pork stew was also really good. The soup, like I said, I wasn't a huge fan of the flavor of it was kind of weird to me, but everything else was just absolutely delicious. But anyways, that was a delicious lunch. I do think there is a little bit of a traditional Bulgarian cake dessert shop, something like that. So let's go ahead and see if we can find some uh, delicious desserts here in the center of Sofia. All right, next stop, we've come to a place, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's a Cyrillic place again in the alphabet. Um, and I've gotten two things, I've gotten boza, which is a traditional drink here in Bulgaria, and a little cake, I don't know what it is, it looked pretty good, and there's some whipped cream on top, so of course I'm gonna take it. I think it's like a traditional sort of Turkish type of cake, because it was sitting next to the baklava, that's what I think it is. But what is boza? Boza is a fermented Bulgarian drink. It is made of millet and wheat and some other grains, and it's fermented down, until it becomes this sort of brownish thick liquid. 
I don't know what it's going to taste like. I really have no clue, but I'm curious to try my first Bulgarian Boza. So let's go ahead and try it out. Oh, whoa. That is delicious. It's sweet. It is very, very sweet, but it's a very thick liquid. It's a very thick fermented liquid. You can taste the fermentation of the, the, the wheat and the millet and the different sort of grains that have been put into it. But this is very unique. I've never had anything like it before. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and try the cake. Um, you can see there's a little bit of syrup that's been soaking in that cake. So let's go ahead and dig right in and try out this cake here. Oh. Very simple sweet cake that's been soaked in syrup. It's been soaking so you can see the syrup that's on the bottom. Very, very sweet. The whipped cream is not as light. It's more of like a cream cream, not really a whipped cream. It's not airy and light like it usually is when it's a whipped cream. But wow, I love it. And by the way, total price of this, 330 lent. That's like, what, a euro and a half? This is great. I think this is something that's very traditional, Moza. And I, honestly, if you get a chance to try it out, it's really, really thick, really, really good. The cake, nothing much for it. It's a very simple, just sort of cake, but it's soaked in that syrup and it's got that cream on top. Really, really good combination together. Very happy with this. I mean, this is like an old school Bulgarian type of bakery. The people who are here are all Bulgarians and the person inside serving, she doesn't speak English. There's no English here. This is literally just Bulgarian. It's as local as it gets. These are the types of places that like to have some afternoon snacks and traditional foods. So great place, really a great place to have a little snack, a little dessert here uh, on a day in Sofia. But I'm gonna finish this up and I think I'm gonna be still pretty full. So I'll see you guys when we eat again later in the evening tonight. All right, final stop of the day because I am actually pretty full. I've been waiting to like feel hungry, but for some reason, I think between the fried donut at the beginning and the meal that we had and the dessert and everything, I'm not really that hungry. But nonetheless, we've come to a place here. It's known as the Grill House Food Station. And this place has some of the things that I've been dying to try since I've come to Bulgaria. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and see what we have. So first off, we've got kebabche, which we've had before, but this kebabche looks amazing. It looks darker, it looks crispier, it looks incredible. I've got this beef patty, which he said is the most popular, so I trust him and I said, give me a beef patty, go for it. Got some potatoes and I've got beans. Now, you might ask, beans, why beans? Well, I've heard kebabche and beans are supposed to be a legendary combination, so obviously I had to try it out. First things first, I think I'm gonna start with the potatoes. They look crispy, they're covered in dill, they're covered in the herbs, which I love. All the potatoes here in Bulgaria, they do potatoes, right? They make sure it's seasoned perfectly, whether it's fries, fried potatoes that are flat like this, everything is done really, really well. Let's go ahead and try out our potatoes. Mm. Delicious, really, really nice, fluffy, bouncy, airy on the inside, and the flavor. That's what I love about potatoes in Bulgaria. The flavor they have on there, it is incredible. It honestly is incredible. Okay, let's go ahead and try out our beef patty first. He said this was something that's really popular. And just looking at it, you can see there's a lot of things inside. You've got like red color, green color, white color, yellow color. It's like the colors no. of a rainbow inside a beef patty. No. I bet you've never had a beef patty with the colors of the rainbow inside it. So let's go ahead and try this out. Oh, that is like a beef hamburger patty that has just been made to perfection. The char grilled flavor, wow. That is literally grilled to perfection. I have to say, it's not the juiciest on the inside, but the flavor, it's there. You've got the hint of some like spice, something that's adding some interesting um, thing to it. Really, really good. Imagine a hamburger patty, but for some reason it's a little bit spiced. You got some onions, you got some other herbs in there. Really, really delicious. All right, let's go for the kebab, the kebab chai, which I've tried before here in Sofia, but I want to try another kebab chai, so let's go ahead and give it a try. Every Balkan country here in Eastern Europe has their way of doing kebabs. But here in Bulgaria, I don't know why, I don't know how they've done it, but every kebab chai I've had has just been so spiced, like heavily, heavily spiced, like Middle Eastern heavily spiced. It's incredible how much flavor is in their kebab chase here. I don't understand how it's so flavorful, but it just is. 
and it's incredible. Now, of course, I'm gonna try some of the beans because the beans are what I really wanted to try. That, that's like the main thing that's supposed to be really famous here. Um, you see, you've got some like carrots, you've got some peppers, I think. So let's go ahead and try out our beans. Oh, that is delicious. Purchase at Heinz beans, but you've got a little bit of an herbiness from whatever herbs they always put in, literally everything here. And the crispiness from the peppers and the carrots and those ingredients really add, it's smooth, it's beautiful, it's luscious, it's very, very rich. And the way that the beans are taken care of are amazing. Now, of course, what is the popular way to do is to get kebab chai with some beans. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna eat the kebab chai and I'm gonna chase it down with some beans. Let's do this. That is a winning combination right there. That is incredible. The sweetness from the beans helps to contrast the really oily, charred flavor of the kebab che. The two of them together really, really go well. And by the way, the price of all of this, 15.50 lev. That's really affordable considering the amount of meat I'm getting, potatoes and beans, all of that together, that is 15.50. Delicious, absolutely delicious. But I'm gonna finish this up and I'll see you guys in a bit to talk about our beautiful food day here in Sofia, Bulgaria. Oh, what a satisfying meal that was. That place is open pretty late, I think. It's open till, I wanna say midnight or 1 a.m. I'm not sure, but wow. That was a really, really delicious meal. I'm definitely stuffed right now. It, I cannot eat any more for the life of me, but what a beautiful food day it has been here in the city of Sofia, Bulgaria. I mean, we've tried foods that I've never really think of before. Like, for example, the, the fried donut, the fried, dough thing at the beginning, which to me is probably the best fried thing I've had here in Eastern Europe. It's so light, so airy. Um, and then of course, the the boza, the traditional fermented sweet grain millet sort of thing, which is only found here in Bulgaria as well. That was also really, really unique. I haven't seen that anywhere else in the Balkans so far. Um, and then of course, kebabche with beans. What a unique combination, what an amazing combination, what a great combination that is that is a legendary combination that if you're here in Sofia you've got to get it with that I'm going to <laughs> there's some locals here saying hi but with that I'm going to end the video here I hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you did definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more food and travel videos it has been an exceptionally delicious food day here in Bulgaria and unfortunately it is our last food day here in Bulgaria but we got a lot more videos coming your way so make sure to stay tuned and I'll see you guys on the next one bye guys Thank you.